Excellent. And we'll start recording with YouTube as well. Okay. Hello and welcome to the weekly IPFS call. Um, my name is Portia. Thank you for joining us in this call. We get a chance to see all the wonderful things that are being built in the IPFS community. And today we have uh, Olivier from Pando. Um, and he's going to tell us how Pando uh, uses IPFS. And he can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe Pando um, serves solves many problems. One, it works with um, open source. So I think it's like a, an alternative to GitHub. It also has like an incentive motive um, for people to build. So it uses smart contracts. And I believe it's also built on top of Aragon. And I believe it um, is open to all contributors and not just developers. So um, I will let uh, Olivier take it from here. Hey. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Maria, for the presentation. Thanks for the invite. Um, I cannot so, yeah. hear you, Olivier. Uh, sorry? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. I think that, yeah, I think that's just some Porsche's end. I can hear you fine. OK. Um, so yeah, um, uh, the idea is to, to talk to you a little about Pando. I'm going to try to share my screen. I'm not sure it's working. Can you see the slides now? Yes. OK, pretty cool. So um, yeah, basically what is Pando? Uh, I don't know if you heard about it, but it's kind of distributed uh, versioning system based on IPFS, IPLD, and uh, Aragon and Ethereum. Um, is to decentralize uh, GitHub as much as possible, even though obviously in the short term, some things are going to be complicated to implement in a fully decentralized way. But uh, yeah, the idea is to provide uh, an as much functional as possible alternative to GitHub uh, pretty soon. Um, the idea on the long run uh, being given to provide decentralized alternative to Git, uh, because we figured out developing portals that Git was not really suited uh, for decentralized workflow, uh, mainly because of the whole uh, idea of maintainers it's relying on. Um, so actually, at the beginning, we started developing a whole new uh, version tracking system, an alternative to Git. But most of the people in the community told us okay, we need to stick, keep using Git because you know all our tools rely on Git, and also please make Pando compatible with Git and based on Git. So. Uh, we kind of reorganized and we fought for the code to uh, make Pondo uh, compatible with Git. Actually, Pondo is kind of a Git remote helper for now, uh, but we are still working for a more long-term uh, goal to provide some kind of an alternative to Git, which will be way more web stream added. But uh, anyhow, so yeah, the idea is to provide decentralization to, to GitHub, at least in the short term, uh, architectural decentralization. So. Uh, well, how it works, it's pretty simple. I won't explain you guys how IPFS and IPLD works. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, each time you want to push uh, your commits um, in a decentralized way, uh, we rely on the uh, IPLD Git uh, resolver. So all the files are uploaded to IPFS. Uh, the Git objects are translated into an IPLD um, Git object and uploaded to IPFS2 pin. And then we take the hash, the IPLD hash of the new head, and we just try to store it on chain uh, on a small smart contract, which is handled by an Aragon DAO. Um, so this is pretty cool because it means that the gas costs on Ethereum to store your whole uh, version tracking um, mechanism is really cheap because you just have to store the hash of the head of each branch. So it's like a string per branch. So it's pretty cheap because we still have this problem of gas costs on, um, on Ethereum. 
uh, well, the idea obviously is to decentralize uh, architecture as much as possible at uh, GitHub. Uh, for obvious reason, I know we all know. Uh, I mean, we all know it's being bought by Microsoft. Uh, it's a major central point of failure. I mean, if GitHub goes down, basically all of us are kind of fucked to work. <laughs> so it's a real, it's a real problem. Um, and yeah, the idea that uh, if you use Pando, you actually own your DAO. Uh, we don't rely on any token, neither uh, Aragon. Actually, there is an Aragon token used for governance, but you are not forced to use this token to use an Aragon DAO. So you own your DAO, you own your repo, you have no single point of failure, it's enforceable. So yeah, that's, that's what the goal. Uh, the other point about the decentralization is the political decentralization, or let's say the organi organizational decentralization. Um, I mean, well, there are lots of problems in the open source ecosystem for now. Um, one of which being, okay, uh, there is not much more incentives for open source developers to contribute to repositories because they are not recognized. I mean, your name ended up being last in the list of all the contributions in the repo, which is not super, uh, super, super nice. And even for the maintainer, it's a pain because uh, obviously it's a job you do for free and you end up needing to maintain tons of stuff and can be pretty, pretty quickly time consuming. And uh, we've seen the problem a couple of months ago with this uh, vulnerability in uh, a crypto library on NPM where a guy took uh, the maintenance to relieve uh, the uh, former maintainer and in the end it was just to inject a vulnerability. So uh, I think this is, this is really a problem. Uh, the idea uh, with Pondo is to try to decentralize as much as possible this maintainer work um, and to provide recognition and incentives to uh, contributors. So how does it work? Well, basically, if you don't own push rights on the repo, uh, this is automatically, when you want to push the code, this is automatically going to open some kind of a pull request, even though it's not exactly a pull request because it's not going to be able to be merged automatically on chain for obvious reasons, but it's more like a push request, let's say. Um, and so your push request can be, uh, you know, reviewed, and if it's accepted, then this is going to open what is called a lineage request, which is a lineage a request for tokens to reward your uh, contribution to this repo, to acknowledge this contribution to this repo. Um, so all uh, the past contributors are going to be able to vote, and there will be some kind of way of voting to uh, quantify the importance of your contribution, because obviously, depending if it's a major feature or just a small typo correction, it's not the same. So we can quantify the value of the contribution this way. And uh, with respect to this process, you're going to be working with some uh, leech token or authorship token. Uh, these tokens are not meant to have uh, immediately a monetary value. They are not meant to be uh, exchanged on secondary exchanges. Uh, they are not even meant to be terrible. Um, they mostly worth a reputation token. Uh, and they will give you uh, some authority uh, in the rule to decide of its future. How are the funds going to be handled? Uh, which pull request should we accept, which one should we reject, how to quantify the value of the following contribution, stuff like that. So basically it helps us decentralize the maintainer workflow because all contributors gain authority and reputation into the repo and can uh, be a part of the maintenance process and the decision process with respect to their authorship share, their reputation, their image tokens uh, um, into the repo. Um, and it's critical too because it means that if at some point uh, you end up having an income for your repo because you best funds, because someone is willing to pay you and stuff like that, then you can automatically share these funds to all with all the contributors with respect to uh, the number of niche tokens they own, with respect to the reputation they own into this uh, repo. Um, the good news is that, and this is more of a long-term plan, but we're also working on the license to make this work. The good news is that you can also declare your software dependency as uh, uh, you can grant a lineage token or reputation to your software dependencies. Um, so for instance, you can make it so that when you uh, do publish an open source library and people use it, you can claim some authorship um, in this repos or you can be granting token so that if at some point any of your dependencies or any of the repo using your library as a dependency, earn an income and share it uh, fairly, then it will be shared up to the NH tree, the dependency tree, up to you. So it kind of, so it, it, it's not solving, but it helps 
uh, solving the problem of the open source sustainability uh, system. Um, the other thing is that this uh, Pondo thing is built on top of Aragon, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but uh, basically Aragon is a DAO framework. Um, it helps you build modular DAOs on top of Ethereum with front ends uh, and let's say interoperability between all the contracts uh, comprising the DAO. It's pretty modular and it's pretty powerful. So uh, this means you can do tons of things. Uh, for instance, you can decide of your governance scheme. Uh, the example I've given about deciding which pull request to accept, which pull requests to reject and stuff like that. Uh, in the uh, uh, default version of Pondo, it's like basic, uh, basic votes system. So people can vote with respect to the reputation they own into the repo. Uh, but you can implement any kind of governance system you want. So uh, for instance, uh, there are people developing uh, Futaki, so you can delegate decision power to, I don't know, a predictive market or something like that. I, I don't know if it's relevant for any kind of repo, but uh, you can. Uh, the other thing is that you can use um, the uh, fundraising or the ICO library that Aragon is providing. Actually, we are the one developing these uh, libraries too, which is called Apiary, so this will allow any kind of open source repo to easily, uh, it will be like a quick operation to spawn some kind of a fundraising system or DICO system where people can uh, put money into your repo and then kind of decide and vote about uh, at what pace, at what uh, speed you're going to be allowed to, uh, to spend this money to uh, fund your work. And if they realize that you don't do shit, then they can uh, lower the tap and stuff like that. Uh, and basically, you can do whatever we want because uh, uh, Aragon is pretty modular, so you can install uh, anything you want. Um, so yes, it, I don't know if we have time for a demo or if it's too sh too long. We do have time for a demo. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So um, let me. Uh, you should see my terminal window now. We no, it's still the present. No, you're not seeing the terminal window. Oh, let me... No. Okay, now we see the terminal. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, basically, so uh, on the CLI side, uh, Pondo is just a Git remote helper that uh, I guess you guys are familiar with because there are lots of uh, remote helper based on IPFS and a small a uh, Git extension. Uh, so basically that allows you to do, uh, to deploy a new DAO, like think of this DAO as a GitHub organization. So everything is running on a local dev chain there, but everything is going to be deployed on Rinkeb testnet uh, probably next week. So you're going to be able to play with it uh, easily. So yeah, you can just deploy uh, a DAO or an organization. Think about it as your GitHub organization. So I think you can't see it now, but uh, basically it's integrated with uh, Frame, and Frame is a desktop signer for uh, Ethereum, so you can sign transactions from your desktop, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, so here we have this uh, this DAO, this address. Um, so. Let me know. Uh, I need to change this. Uh, okay, so now this is the uh, Elegant front end, so I can just uh, past the address of my DAO there, and this is going to load. So this is basically the Aragon front end, which is uh, the front end for your DAO and your um, your application. So you have a token manager to uh, distribute tokens. So I'm the only one having token there. You have a finance app if you want to make transfers. And stuff. You have a permission app, kind of explaining you what are the permissions granted on top of every contract. 
Um, and now we have this colony app, which is uh, the application uh, from which uh, we are gonna, we are gonna, sorry. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's a factory for the repositories uh, on chain. So we can deploy a new repository there. Uh, let's call it how to and give it a little description. So we have this kind of nice red stack description, which are provided by uh, Argon. Okay, now this is deployed. So here is my uh, repo there. Uh, and now I can go and see my repo. So obviously there is nothing there. Uh, just a bit of stating. Uh, now let me go back to the terminal. So it's just kind of a mess to change my window all the time. Okay, so we can also uh, deploy repo uh, directly from the CLI if you prefer. So let's call it Argon uh, OS. The same, I need to sign my transaction there. And okay. Um, so now let's make just a small. Okay, let's create a Git uh, repo there. So now I can just add the address of this uh, repo. and just add it as a remote, so git remote add. What is that? Oh, I forgot to give it a name, sorry about that. Okay, and now we can just create a small uh, Uh, so, um, okay, and now I can just uh, git push origin master as you used to. So now we have basically like all the IPFS and IPFS related stuff going on. It's like an Intel uh, And we just have the transaction it's going to be registered on chain. Um, and um, so I need to switch window again. <laughs> and that is going to be done. Uh, Okay, so now if I go back there, yes, you can see that now I have ah, one branch, one commit, okay, pretty easy. Uh, we have automatic readme fetching, so, and, and, and Margon rendering, so it's like the overview tab of your GitHub stuff. And now we have, well, obviously now it's super simple, but we have um, a code building interface, everything being directly fetched from uh, IPFS. I would just have one branch there, but you can have as many branches as you want. You can also go through all your commit, even though there is just one there, so it's not uh, super interesting, but I uh, yeah, basically we have that. So what we have to do now is we are working on the front end for the pull request and lineage request system. Um, uh, I was able to push there because I was the one deploying the repo, so I had the rights, I had the permission to push. You can see it uh, there, you know, like, this is my permission push commit, and this is my address. If I add in the permission, then it would have opened a pull request automatically. Uh, so we still have to implement the interface for that, but it's going to be uh, indeed uh, 
in the week, I guess. So uh, we're going to be able to publish on Rinkaby uh, next next week for everyone to, to play with and tests. And uh, yeah, that's it. I uh, stopped talking, guys. That was great. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, first, my apologies um, for my computer starting over again. But I'm back. And um, this time for questions, questions and comments. So if you have a question, uh, please put it in the chat box. I have a question. I wasn't here for the whole presentation, but can you tell me a bit more about the financial model behind um, Panda, like the the economic model, and if uh, you've worked on that, if that's part of the UI yet? Just curious. Regarding our own economic model, we have none. <laughs> Uh, so no, no, to, to, to be more serious, uh, uh, actually we, we got approached by a couple of uh, companies for funding and stuff like that, but we didn't want to tokenize on the weather protocol uh, because it would have made no sense, you know, like it's supposed to be a public infrastructure and a protocol anyone can use. Um, so yeah, it's supposed to be free, so we don't want to monetize the stuff any, any, anyhow. Um, so yeah, we, we've been lucky to be funded by a grant from Aragon and actually we're applying to become a full-time Aragon team. Uh, so we'll see how things goes uh, in the couple of, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but the idea is, is to integrate Pondo as tightly as possible in the Aragon stack. Uh, and for the Pondo repos, people using Pondo and uh, we could be also us at some point, uh, yes, we are working on a kind of a fundraising application, uh, which is basically a bonding curve based application. So it's an automatic market mayor where you can buy uh, tokens of the repo and sell, resell this token to the same, these very same contracts. Um, so basically it's like a way for people to invest in the repo in the expectation that if more people invest in it, they may have a small benefits out of it. But it can also work as a pure donation system where people just say, okay, I love this uh, library, this open source library. I'm going to give money into it. And then it's going to be one click away because everything's going to be uh, automatically happening on chain. Uh, the idea is that we are trying to make this uh, fundraising system be more fair to avoid scam, let's say. Uh, so basically, this is more of a die CEO scheme. So basically, the people who have invested are gonna have the rights to decide at what speed the funds they've invested can be used and can be spent by the repo owners. Uh, so if someone raises, I don't know, one million, even though it's not gonna be most of the repos, obviously, <laughs> but uh, he can't just take one million and leave because he's gonna be able to uh, spend maybe 1K a week or something like that. And if the investors see that the card does not move and nothing happens, they can just take back their funds at some point and no one can live with all the funds pretty quickly. So, Oh, thank you for the comprehensive answer. Um, I was speaking more to you when you answered this question of the financial incentives for open source. So if there is an open source project that you like, you're able to donate it. And from your explanation, I'm not mistaken, um, the project would not take the donation in one lump sum. They will take it in intervals. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And also uh, about the problem of open source sustainability, I don't know if you were back at the point, but basically the idea is that you can declare, and at some point we would like to make it kind of mandatory, but we need a license system for that. So we are working with people from the Creative Commons movement and stuff like that to, to build it. But the idea will be to make it uh, enforceable that people using your library and being hosted uh, on Pondo will need to declare you as a software dependency and grant you some uh, reputation, some lineage tokens, so that if they gain an income, then they have to share it with you somehow. So if people use your library somehow, and oh, if people use your library and don't make any money out of it, then it's fine. But if people use your library and make money out of it, then at some point they have to share it with you. So that's the idea. Right, thank you. Do we have any more questions? Um, I have a question. 
And I don't have a lot of background information on this, but I was curious when you were showing us the demo, you showed us um, a signer, like you showed us a signer for signing a transaction. Could you talk a little bit more about the signing of transactions? Because I've only done it like through MetaMask. Yeah, so um, this signer system is called Frame, F-R-A-M-E. Um, and so it's a desktop level uh, signing system, uh, which is developed by someone called John Don Muir, which is doing a very good job. Uh, he's also uh, the recipient of an, an Oregon Nest uh, grant, so it, it, that's, that's how it's funded. Um, and basically what is Frame, um, it's like a desktop level signer stuff, so it allows you to sign any kind of transaction. It can come from the browser, it also works, but it can also come from any desktop application, uh, including CLI application. Um, and yes, basically it's working with uh, any kind of, I mean, Trezor and Ledger hardware wallet. You can also put private key in it if you want, but it's mostly made to work with uh, hardware wallets. Um, and yes, it, it, it it's like a MetaMask for this stuff, but it goes, so it's pretty powerful. Uh, and also they are working on making some integration, uh, a, a title integration with uh, Aragon to have these right spec descriptions, for instance, which is some kind of languages, uh, description languages. Uh, Aragon has been built to, to let you describe to the end user what is your Ethereum transaction doing in a human readable way and also integrate with what is called the agent application on uh, Aragon. Uh, basically, you're going to be able to forward intent or act on the blockchain as a member of a DAO. So uh, let's say I am a repo and I want to vote in another repo uh, under the name of this first repo. I can use uh, the address of my DAO online to sign a transaction and it will automatically forward this intent to the DAO and ask people to vote on it. And if everyone votes to do it, then it's going to sign the stuff. And so it helps me acting uh, on behalf of a DAO somehow. So this is pretty powerful. Cool. Thank you. Let's see. Um, we, it's already time. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. Thanks a lot. And, um, before we go, I also want to j thank Jim for taking notes. And uh, hey, Jim. And we'll see everyone next week at the next uh, IPFS weekly uh, meet, uh, weekly call. Thank you, and have a great week. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.